Hey everybody, Barry here again. I'm happy to report that Desperado is running really well. It's not perfect, but I'm getting the tune sorted out. But as for the engine itself, perfect oil pressure. Can't really tell if there's misfires or not because the tune is so wonky, but after I get it figured out, then I'll be able to figure out if the engine itself is good. As of right now, I'm just loading a tune into it. If I can find the USB port, there it is. And Just gotta go over here to PCM Hammer and write this tune. And then I can focus on what I'm actually trying to say. All right, that's writing. And right now I'm gonna do base running airflow. And the reason for that is I have a different engine. It's still a six liter, but it has dished pistons and 317 heads meaning it has nine and a half to one compression or 9.4 if you want to get technical. Whereas the last engine had dished pistons and 243 heads when it was like 10 and a half to one. So it makes less compression. It has a different set of heads, different chambers, different valves, and it has a sloppy stage three cam, which I didn't actually get a chance to tune in the last engine because it blew up so quick. So right now it's rich in places. It's lean in other places. The base running airflow in drive and in gear is off. So when I come down to a stop sign, I hit the brake and it stumbles and it stumbles and it catches itself and it's not ideal. So when I get this tune written in, I'm going to jump over to VCM scanner and then we'll go over to BRAF. Now this says park neutral, but it's the same chart. I just put it in drive or I put it in park and log it from there. So what I'm going to do right now is in drive because park neutral is actually not that bad. I'm not exactly sure what the temperature is. It's 18 degrees Celsius, whatever that is in Fahrenheit is what the engine is because it's been shut off for three or four hours. And actually this is in Celsius. So it's either gonna start in this eight cell or this 20 cell and it's gonna collect data and populate these cells all the way up to uh, I guess probably 92 degrees or 104 degrees. And then I'll be able to take that data from here and put it over into the base running airflow in the tune. And that should make it run a lot better. While it's writing, I'm gonna go jam a couple junks of wood in under the tires because I need to put this thing in gear. And I don't wanna have the brake on. I don't wanna like load the engine up and maybe skew the results. Maybe it won't, I don't know. But the brakes are applied by power steering because I have hydro boost. So I can see that loading the engine up and maybe I should do a test like that later just to see if it gives me any different results. I got two pieces of splits put behind and in front of the tire here and one more put over here. Basically the cam in this truck is not gonna apply a lot of load just in drive with no fuel because it's got a 3200 stall and the cam doesn't make a lot of torque. So basically in front of obviously to stop it from going over here and landing in a ditch. And also because of the way the truck idles in gear, it kind of lurches. So it's going to want to go back forward, back forward, back forward like that. And I kind of want to keep that tire stationary so it's not lurching all over the place. This is seconds away from being done. Then I'll fire it up, get it in gear right away and just let it do its thing until it gets up to temperature. All right, PCM hammer is finished flashing. Just gonna shut this off. Switch from V-Linker over to HP tuners because my life is just an unending labyrinth of cords. Where does this even go? So many cords. And switch that out. Now what I'm gonna do is get it up here and I already have the wheels chalked. So I'm just gonna put it in neutral, let it come to rest. Close this out. Now the key is on, start recording. And as soon as it starts recording, I'm gonna fire this up and pull it right down in gear. And hopefully it'll stay running. Let it freeze up, are you serious? All right, let's try this again. I swear I've had to use control alt dilly like 10 million times in my life. Okay. Just gonna turn the key to on. 
start recording and as soon as this records get it running jam it down in gear all right so okay we're recording i'm just going to fire up oh. forgot i should probably close the cutout okay just because it didn't fire up right away i'm going to stop recording Start recording again. Start recording again. Right down in gear. Okay, so, yep, it's still running. You can feel the lurching. Make sure it's actually collecting data because it does get contrary sometimes. Yep, look at that. Now that 44 degrees, it jumped off that cell right away. So I'm not gonna use that one at all. 22, I assume that's percent volumetric efficiency or something is a pretty high number, so I'm definitely not going to use that. So I'm just going to get that chalk back in there because it did lurch around for a second there. Jam that wheel up nice and good. And right now it's not actually too bad. I did play with the VE a little bit, so it's actually getting a lot closer anyway. Idling between 14.0, 14.5, it's not bad. I'd like to be up around 15-ish with a cam, and it may get up there as it warms up. But that's what we're gonna find out. So right now, you can see that it started around 22, and it's down around 18 now. So that's gonna get an average, and as, it, as the engine warms up, now it's gonna jump to that next cell. I'm gonna to have to do this two or three times. I know that because that 18.47, that was still dropping. So the engine warmed up faster than it could collect perfect data. So basically, I think I'm gonna put that data in and then I'll do it again after. So how many counts is that? I only got 32 counts at 44 degrees, got 550 counts at 56 degrees. So that's actually not too bad. It should be relatively close. Let's see what it sounds like. cell right now and it's looking a lot more consistent 1847 down to 1687 and 1675 is very slowly moving so that cell is going to be basically dead on so after I got the engine running and after I knew that I had no misfires left that kind of thing I went ahead and put on the engine covers I do need to clean them up a little bit and as you can see, I've got a lot of extra wiring in here, like for the hop switch, the second fuel pump, three bar map sensor, the wide band, stuff like that. So yeah, there's extra wiring, but yeah, it is what it is, I'm doing what I can. And one thing actually that I've been thinking about is Matt Stansbury said that I should hook up PCV, which obviously, yes, I should, but it doesn't have anything right now, it's just venting. And he mentioned that some people put a port on their intake so that the turbo draws air from the crankcase in through here, which I think would be pretty cool. So I might run a hose from each valve cover and just put two ports right here so that it pulls that extra crankcase gases or whatever, puts it in here. So I think that's not a bad idea. When it's in boost, obviously it won't affect it at all. It'll just always be pulling. So that's kind of a cool setup. I never really got my head around that until they explained it to me. But the engine is looking really good. I gotta tidy up a little bit of wiring here. This was just a wire that I put in for the wide band and then for uh, the 
other wideband, actually. I have two in this truck. And the boost sensor and everything. All right, we're getting really down there now. I would say the engine is probably up to operating temperature. We're in the 80 cell. And engine coolant is at 181 Fahrenheit. I've got a 160 thermostat in this and the fans are set to cut in at 185 and sort of maintain 180. And with the temperature outside being now 16 degrees Celsius, I don't think it's gonna climb any higher. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit stop on this log. Pop it up in neutral. And I'm just gonna shut it off because I only have one hand. Now we'll go in and edit this data. Now I always have the hardest time finding stuff on Tuner Pro, so I just went and searched airflow, found desired airflow, and here we've got two tables, in gear and park neutral. Obviously today we're gonna to be doing the in gear section. Now I still have my data set up for coolant temperature Celsius because I have it set up from when I was using HP tuners or VCM editor. So I just need to translate this over to Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna start at 56, as I said. So I'm gonna go down here, unit conversion. Celsius 56 is 132 Fahrenheit. So the engine must not have been completely cooled off. So I'll have to start over when the engine is ice cold again. So 132. Oh, the 133 cell is right there. I'm gonna change that to 18.47 so yeah we are off it says 14.66 right there so 18.47 next number is 16.87 16.87 next number is 16.01 16.01 so now we can see that 111 is 1784, 133 is 18.47. So what I'm going to do is interpolate between, I think I'll go between this 21 and then this 18.47 here. That will bring this 17 up, it'll bring that 18 up, and it'll bring that 19, and it'll kind of average it smoothly between these bunch right here. So we just go interpolate. I'm just going to make this window a little bigger. And then I'll execute that. There we go. So now we got 21, 21, 20, 19, 18. So that's going to make that a lot smoother and it should get it a lot closer to our target the next time I do this test. Just going to save that. Now this is exactly the same in HP tuners. It's just in a different location. And if you want to know where it is in HP tuners, you come over here to engine, idle, over to airflow, and then your base running airflow is right here. And that's going to open up your in gear and your park neutral in this scale. And there you can see that's why I have that Celsius scale. I just don't have it changed over yet. And I'll be doing that shortly because, yeah, that is kind of annoying. And that's it. That's base running airflow. Now, how do you set up a histogram to actually log these numbers and actually populate the cells? So I'm just going to go in here into my graphs layout and show you from here. So you come over here, the parameter is idle desired airflow. Grams per second, two decimal points, makes it more accurate. 10 cell hits required, that's not really a big deal. You can do the shading, a high value of 25, a low of minus 25. You can make that wider if you think you're going to run into issues. You only need the column axis. So right here, engine coolant temp Celsius, which I have mine at, but most are really gonna be at Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna change that right now. And we'll go through and fix that data. I'm gonna have to manually enter these in, but it's gonna go minus 40, minus 18, three, whatever, right to the end. And we'll check in on that when I have it all copied over. Okay, here we are all copied over. And all you need to do is put in your number, space, number, space, number, space. There's no need for anything else. Just X this out, and there it is. Scale has changed, and you're good to go. So we just did it for in gear, but you do the exact same thing for in park neutral. You don't need to select BRAF park neutral or in gear, it doesn't matter. It does the same thing on my scanner, at least. 
and all you do then is wait for it to get as cold as possible. It's best to do this in the winter if you can, really, because you'll get the best scale. And before you know it, you'll be all tuned up. Now that I have everything copied over, I just need to grab the correct cord, wherever it may be. What a never-ending battle of cords. Okay. Key on. Now this is probably not going to apply to like 99% of you, but basically you just do a write on HP tuners. I need to do a write entire because I'm using Boost OS and it gets a little bit finicky. And now just write it and hopefully this improves the ride. And the tune is done. Now, I don't have park neutral done yet, of course, so it's not going to run perfectly in park neutral, but hopefully in drive it should be a lot better. Well, let's go for a drive. I'm just going to plug in my HP tuner again and do some logging just because when you change the base running airflow, sometimes it can change up the VE table a little bit. Oh, it feels a lot stronger already, actually. It does feel stronger already. I do need to work on the low temperature a little bit. I just sort of interpolated those numbers, so it's going to work a little better, but not perfectly, of course. Beautiful. I don't think it's going to be doing its own cruise control thing, because the stall is a lot higher than the idle speed, but... Yeah, it is slowing down on its own, so that's good. I don't want it to be, like, winged out doing 60 down through town or anything. And I'm at a stop sign. I didn't touch the gas, and it's staying alive. Man, that was a big difference already. That's only the first test. Or the first tune, I should say. As I explained, I did it in park and neutral. As I explained, I did this test in gear, or this tune in gear. So basically just do the exact same thing in park and neutral. You don't really have, or, or sorry, in park. You just do the same thing in park. You don't have to put it in neutral. Park neutral is the same setting, and it's exactly the same. So just do it in park. You don't have to chalk the wheels because you're in park. And Get it as cold as you can, let it warm up on its own, don't mess with dials on the dash, don't go messing with air conditioning and all that stuff, just leave it alone, let it do its thing, and when it gets up to operating temperature, let it get a few hundred hits at that cell. It's not going to get any hotter, but it will continue to collect data when it gets there. So hit that little C for counts, and when it gets to three, 400, 500 counts, whatever, take that data, plug it into your tune, and at some point, you might only have to do it once, it might be perfectly fine. Like, this is actually not bad at all. You might have to do it twice. I'll probably do it two or three times because I'm a little bit particular when it comes to this. But it will improve drastically and quickly. Well, that's my video for today. I'm all done. So thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks for my YouTube members, patrons, and subscribers. If you want to check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash station road rat routes. YouTube members link is down here. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.